I'm doing another panfish fly this week, and this week we're going to be doing a fly called the orange mallard. When I originally ran across this fly years ago, it was called the orange teal, and that's because the tail and the wing were made out of teal feathers instead of orange mallard. At the time, I didn't have any teal, so I just used the orange mallard, and this fly has produced very, very well for me over the years. It's a great fly for subsurface, especially in the spring and then later in the summer when panfish are down deeper and you need to get the flies down. Obviously, this is called an orange mallard because of the orange feathers and the orange material, but you could change this up and you could make this olive if you wanted or black, uh, any kind of color that you think is going to attract the fish. I apologize for the roughness of my hands. It wasn't until reviewing the footage for this video that I noticed just how bad they look. Apparently it's a side effect of all the hand washing that's been going on during this coronavirus lockdown. So I will get some hand cream on those and they will look better. That's the orange mallard and we'll go ahead and get started. start our orange mallard, I'm going to place the hook in the vise and debarb the hook. This is a, the hook I'm using for this is a Mustad 9672 in a size 8. You could use, say, a 9671 if you want a shorter body. Uh, you could even use like a Mustad 3906B if you need a little bit heavier hook and you don't mind just a little bit shorter body. With the hook debarbed, I'm going to attach my thread just behind the eye of the hook. For thread, I'm using a Danville 60 in a fluorescent orange. I'm going to attach my thread about an eye length behind the eye of the hook, and I'm going to run my thread down the shank to the bend of the hook. It's not important that I have touching turns and um, a nice level uh, base of thread here. I'm just putting it down and give us a little bit uh, extra gripping power when we are actually dubbing the body. For the tail, I'm going to be using some orange mallard flank fibers. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find a feather. I want one that has basically the ends, the tips of it, fairly level and not pointed. I'm going to separate the tip of the feather out from the other fibers, and then I'm going to clip maybe about a half an inch or so of the tip of that feather out, and that's what I'm going to use for the tail. You want to set the rest of the feather aside because that's what we're going to be using for the wing. I'm going to measure my tail about a shank length long and I will tie that in right at the end of the shank. I will proceed to wrap down the rest of the feather fibers along the shank of the hook. Now I'm ready to tie in the rib for our fly, which I'm using a Danville oval tinsel in gold, and this is a size 10. If you do go down in size for the fly and the hook, you might want to try a size 14. I'm going to attach the, the rib along the hook shank and bring it right around to the underside of the hook shank. And then I'm just going to wrap forward binding that rib along the hook shank. I'll trim off any excess so that the rib is only about the length of the body. This isn't critical because, again, we don't have to worry about a really smooth body here, uh, but it does secure it in. Bring my thread back down to the very end of the shank, and now I'm ready to dub the body of the fly. For dubbing, I'm using a Wapsie Sow Scud dubbing in a Bighorn Orange. I like the Sow Scud dubbing because it's a mixture of natural and synthetic fibers. It goes on very, very um, easy, as well as uh, it has a bugginess uh, look to it. So it's not a smooth body, uh, and it looks just a little fuller. It's also very easy to work with. We're going to make about a three to five inch uh, dubbing noodle, fairly sparse. I prefer to make my dubbing noodles 
on the sparse side, it gives me greater control in terms of where I'm applying the dubbing and how uh, the taper on the body. But however you prefer to, you're going to make about, um, like I said, a three to five, maybe four inch uh, dubbing noodle. And then we will proceed to palmer that onto the hook shank. have a bit of a taper in this fly so you're going to start with a narrow body at the tail and then slowly taper that forward so that as we get up towards the eye of the hook the body is getting thicker. Once we get up to about an eye length maybe a half an eye length behind the eye of the hook our body is complete. You can trim some of the longer fibers back if you want. At the same time, you start catching fish with this fly, their little teeth are gonna be pulling out those hairs left and right, so, and that's fine. It's, it looks better in the water, and I think fish is better if it has a little bit more of a bushy look to it. With the dubbed body completed, we're going to wrap the rib on. Like a lot of your wet flies, you wanna have about five evenly spaced wraps up the body, or rather up the shank of the hook. And whether it's five or six or four isn't as important as just having nice even space wraps. For this one, our sixth wrap will bring us right alongside the shank of the hook to tie that in. I'll put a few wraps in to secure the rib to the hook trim away the excess. I'm going to put a few wraps of thread right behind the eye of the hook, tidy this up a little bit. This will also give me a smooth platform for tying in the wing and the collar on this fly. Again, for the wing, we're going to be using the orange mallard flank, and that's the fiber that we cut the tail out of. Simple procedure, all you're going to do is you're going to clump all of those fibers together. I just place them in my left hand and pull a little bit to draw all those fibers together. And now you have a wing. Sometimes it'll have a little bit of a curve to it. And if you want, you can set it so that the curve is down and the wing kind of sweeps and curves over the top and along the back. You're going to tie the wing in so that it is just past the bend of the hook or about halfway down the tail. Put a few wraps of thread in to secure it and make certain it's positioned right. Trim away the excess and then we're just going to put a few wraps over the butt ends to tidy those up a little bit. Again, this also gives me a little platform and a little space for our collar. The collar for this is made out of a hen breast feather. This is dyed orange. You could certainly use, say, a schloppen feather or even just a regular hen feather that's orange colored or even a mottled hen feather like a speckled orange or something like that. You're going to want to choose a feather that when we palmer the feather in, we're going to tie that in by the tip. You're going to want to have the base barbs on that feather be about a shank length long. So you're going to need to look at that feather and find where that's at. Tr pull away the excess that you don't need and that will give you the, the longest fibers of that the length that you want. 
It's not as important that we have four turns or three turns or five turns of hackle as much as it is that the resulting long fibers that are towards the eye of the hook don't go much further than the point or the barb of the hook. I'll grab the tip of that feather with my hackle pliers and stroke the remaining fibers back so that I can trim away the excess and have just a small handle of that feather to tie in along the hook shank and secure that feather in for palmering. I leave my thread back at the end of, or I should say the base of the wing. That helps to make certain each wrap of that feather is kind of pushed back against the previous one. Grab the base of that feather with your hackle pliers, and you'll want to stroke the fibers back so that we do not trap any in a forward direction and start palmering your hackle around the fly. Generally, I'll get three to four wraps of hackle around the hook shank for my collar. Sometimes I might get five, sometimes I only get three. It's not as important how full the collar is. It's just that they're all nice and on the hook, nice and smooth. And again, you end up with the longest fibers on the outside. Once I have the hackle palmered around the hook, I'm going to secure it on the side of the hook with a wrap or two of thread. Then I'm going to actually fold the stem of the feather back and put wraps of thread working from behind the eye of the hook backwards to make the head of the fly. Rather than trim away the excess hackle, I'm just going to lash it down to the hook as I make the head of the fly, and then I can just pop it off. Take your time making the head of the fly. You don't have to be super concerned about it being just perfect and smooth. This is just a panfish fly. But at the same time, you do want to take care, try and make it look nice. We'll do a four or five turn whip finish, trim away the thread, and then I can just pop the remaining hackle stem right off. It gives us a nice clean look. Put a drop of head cement, on the top of those thread wraps and on the bottom. That's just going to soak down into those thread wraps and into the feather fibers down below and just secure it. Just helps it against small little teeth from panfish uh, tearing up the head of that fly sooner and it just helps it to last a little bit longer. If you get some head cement into the eye of the hook, you can always use some feather fibers from the mallard flank or uh, even the stem of the, the hackle collar that we put on to run down through the eye of the hook and clean that out. So that's the orange mallard. As I said, if you have teal, you can go ahead and use the teal if you don't have the orange mallard. Most tires have some sort of mallard, and it doesn't have to be orange if you would rather tie some in olive or black or, or some other color. There will be a link down in the description to the original article on tying the orange teal. But the orange mallard has worked very, very well for me over the years. I did not put any lead wraps on this one, but you certainly can if you want to add a little bit more weight. You enjoy cones or beads or anything like that. You could certainly put something like that on the front of it to add a little accent and a little bit of weight to help the fly get down. The orange mallard works really well in the early spring as there's not a lot of surface activity and the fish are mostly focused uh, on insects and things that are deeper in the water. This is a wonderful fly if you've got fish in the shallows in the early spring on a warm day. You can cast this out and just strip it back slow and it's just a wonderful fly for those roaming fish. They just seem to home in on it, see it, and just go after it. So that's the orange mallard. Tie a few up, get out this spring, have some fun. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video and not only learned a new pattern, but maybe learned some new techniques and a few new skills. If you like this video, please hit that thumbs up button below. 
You can support Dressed Irons by hitting the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you get notified when new videos are published. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section and I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Until next time, remember, it's fly time. If you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong.